All right, our next speaker is Mr. Janwa Hadi from SIT. So he's a research engineer and then working on data analytics and machine learning. Uh, he's working on the MPSMI marine and R&D call on hovercraft electrification project, as well as the uh, MOE funded projects on data analytics and machine learning. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Janwar Hadi, as uh, mentioned by Prof. Tay just now. With me is Prof. Tay, also from SIT, Associate Professor. And attending online is Prof. Konovesis from Strathclyde University. So our paper is Ship Navigation and Fuel Profiling based on Noon Report using Neural Network Generative little bit on the background. So this is our subject vessel here. It's Posh Grace. So our aim is to encapsulate the knowledge base of the navigation of this hovercraft. For this case, it's the tugboat. For the reason listed in the slide here. Our subject vessel is Porsche Grace. Uh, so we are in the co uh, cooperation with Porsche and we are supported by MOE and SMI. So we would like to thank MOE and SMI. Yeah, this is the, the uh, block diagram on how we are going to achieve. So uh, the final model will be able to accept user input, such as the time and space. Time and space in terms of the activity area that the top boat is operating and for how long, the duration, as well as the route pattern. And then what the model can give is the route suggestion with the help of part finding algorithm, as well as the amount of fuel required for the job. So this is the background. So in order to achieve our aim, this is the methodology. We see here the example of the, the data here. This is one sample of one job. Okay. There are 405 jobs spanning from April to October 2020. So this positional data is the AIS position data gathered through AIS. And Combined with the known report, we'll be able to um, chop down this AIS continuous data from April to October into 405 routes. And what we do now is we transform this into a route image like that. Okay. And together we extract the metadata. Metadata is the secondary data from the primary route data. So the metadata in this case is the activity area, the boundary by the orange triangle, and the duration. Yes, so this is the, the details on how we transform into the image. Okay, again, the objective is to uh, generate the suggested route as well as the fuel profile. If after we transform the route image, uh, the, the, the sequential positions into image, we can see route pattern here, right? So originally the system doesn't know that this pattern and uh, these routes can be clustered. So what we do, we perform a dynamic time warping methodology on each pair, right? So from here, we can see the breakdown of latitude and longitude. And from there, we can measure the similarity distance. That way we can generate the distance matrix from, the, from each pair. So we see there's zero and 100, for example. 
the distance metric is visualized with this black and white image. Then from there, from this image, we use clustering algorithm to uh, label this, uh, this each of this image where they belong. So each uh, image will have a label. So routes with the similar pattern are classed together, like class A, class B, and class C. Okay, now we want to input this uh, route image and turn them into uh, uh, like a training data set so that we can train the model. The model, the model that we use here is the variational autoencoder network. There are two sub-networks. So after training, it manages to reconstruct the original image. Right. So it's quite a close reconstruction. It may be counterintuitive initially. If you already have the original, why we need the reconstructed image, right? So the idea is to remove this encoder network and use the metadata I explained earlier. Decoder network will establish the latent representation and then the decoder network will be able to translate the latent representation into the reconstructed. Now this latent representation is multidimensional and it is a function of uh, distribution. So it's a distributive function. I mentioned earlier that we are now replacing the encoder network with feature network. So what this does is it extracts the, the classification and the um, metadata as features so that it can generate the same representation, latent representation. So that way we don't use the original route image anymore. So we just give the metadata. For instance, we say uh, uh, we want to have a route C, this activity area for how long, and then the final model will be able to generate the, the route image and the fuel estimation. So the original image is uh, like this. So before we invert, okay. Yeah, after we invert, it looks like this. Then this image is then transformed as a cost map for pathfinding algorithms. You see here, there are like um, darker areas here in the green region, meaning those areas are the frequently visited area by the by these vessels uh, using this route and the red area are the no-go zones like the like the uh, like the no-go zone is not activated meaning that the the boat cannot go there at all so here's the results So a little bit on the latent representation again. As I said, the latent, latent space is multidimensional. So in case of seven dimension, we have to slice it in order, in, in order to be able to present on the projector. So we cannot really view seven dimensions. So we take a two dimensional slice. So we set dimension zero, one, three, 0, 1, 3, 4, and 6 as fixed. And then we set dimension 2 as variable and dimension 5 as variable. And then we give these variable numbers to the decoder network and it enables to compile um, the representation to the reconstructed image. So that is how this uh, variational autoencoder manages to fit the routes into the uh, latent space.
So this letter representation is only an intermediate, right? But it is quite a powerful method. Okay, moving on, we will discuss on the feature network that use the metadata. These feature networks replacing the encoder network. We no longer use the original route, instead we use the no report metadata and we manage to reconstruct the image to get the image similar to the original. Now we will discuss these two results here, route number 22 and number 264. I said the, the reconstructed image can be transformed into course map then this is result number 264 from using the cost map we apply a part funny algorithm such as a star and dextra these are the results for deployment we still recommend to use slam simultaneous localization and mapping All right so we can avoid the ship running aground so this method is um, can be used for global mapping. Right? Now the limitations of this method is that in case for multiple destinations, like this case, somehow there is a third destination there at the far left. This method cannot, the solution presented in this paper cannot perform well. So these trips must be separate in, separated into two. And then if there is a requirement to go around certain region, right? Let's see uh, the blue curve there, it seems to seems to go around certain region on the left side, center left. And this method also uh, could not make up the weakness. Of course it doesn't uh, account for other emergency situation, for example. The benefit is that the reconstructed image as a cost map can narrow down and isolate the irrelevant area so that the, um, the part finding algorithm can perform pretty well. Now, on more on the field prediction. So this is the field prediction for the five test routes. So we will discuss on route 22 first. Okay, why route 22 has so much difference? It's because route 22 is so unique. And since we are excluding this route 22 from training data set, the, the model could not, um, could not make prediction for the situation that it has never learned before. Then for route 288 and 387, it is the good case scenario versus the worst case scenario. You see here that the okay, we have a geographical map here, illustrated map. And here we see the the duration and fuel consumption uh, curve. We see that. The metadata for 288 is very adverse, right? It has a good features, meaning that there, there is a good separation between the, the, the class members. If we are comparing with the class uh, Route 387, the activity area is not as adverse. However, the, the fuel and duration is still quite adverse. That, that's why it can still make but a relatively quite a good guess on the field prediction. So that is about the results. Now to the conclusion. So the generative modeling is able to uh, achieve our aim with relatively small data set, 405 routes throughout seven months. And then what this solution can offer is to uh, to be able to make assisted decision making for the crews and uh
Also, it will help the semi-autonomous system, and eventually, it uh, it can encapsulate the crew's experience as a digital knowledge base. So this is the link to our GitHub page, where more details, even the data and the code can can be downloaded from this link. And with that, I end my presentation. Thank you, Hadi. Is there any questions from the floor? All right, if no questions, uh, we'll end this uh, session.